everybody, this is Jess Eldridge from Sweaty Ganesh Yoga in Eugene, Oregon. And I'm here today to talk about the problems with lock the knee and hyperextension. So this is really a video for anyone who has been taught in yoga classes to lock the knee and also any teachers who currently teach lock the knee. Um, I was originally trained as a Bikram yoga teacher back in 2008 and I also taught students to lock the knee for five years before I received some additional yoga training, some additional anatomy training. Um, I really started looking at the problems with this terminology. So let's start with what a locked knee means. So anatomically speaking, a locked knee means that the knee joint is in extension, which means it's not flexed or bent. So this, is, this is flexion, this is extension. So it means that you've got the femur bone stacked on top of the tibia bone. Um, and when this happens and the joint is anatomically locked, the femur actually rotates inwardly, so inward toward the body on the tibia bone, which creates that locking mechanism in the back of the knee. In this position as well, the hamstrings along the back side of your leg are totally relaxed, they're not engaged. Um, and this is a position that was designed for us to be energy saving. So if you were just going to stand and hang out in your normal position with your bones stacked up, to avoid using all your muscles to support yourself, the only thing that really needs to be um, engaged in my lower body in this position is a little bit of engagement in my calf muscles. So it's anatomically advantageous for us to be able to lock the knees. Um, it's also not very advantageous to use in a balancing posture or in a yoga class when you're trying to use stability in the lower body to create mobility elsewhere. So when I first became a Bikram Yoga teacher, I understood that the difference between Bikram's version of lock the knee and the anatomical version of lock the knee was that Bikram wanted you to contract the quadricep muscles, these four quads on the front of your thighs. There are two problems with this. Um, the first is that when you teach students to lock the knee, and I found this to be the case in many classes, no matter how many times I explained to students that I wanted them to contract the quads to lift up the kneecap, which would protect the knee joints, students would confuse the term lock the knee with the anatomical locking of the joints, which is again, no muscular contraction front or back. So that's part of the problem. It's just the terminology of lock the knee. The other part of the problem is that simply instructing many students to press the knee all the way back and contract the quads does not actually create a situation of stability for the knee joint or for the rest of the body, particularly in balancing postures. So let's take a look at this second problem. What is the problem if we just ask students to push the knee all the way back and contract the quadriceps muscles? So the assumption of this being stable, even in something like a balancing pose, is that the ligaments on the back side of your knee, called the ACL and the PCL for short, so the anterior cruciate and posterior cruciate ligaments, that these ligaments are going to prevent your leg from moving from extension into hyperextension, okay? Where the knee joint actually comes back behind the hip joint and the ankle joint. Now for some people, that's true. Um, and they actually cannot hyperextend because the ACL and PCL don't allow it. But for many students, they can hyperextend. Um, these ligaments are lax enough to accommodate that. Um, and the thing about ligaments is that they are thick bands of connective tissue. They are responsive to our genetics, so what we were born with, but they're also really responsive to habits and conditioning. So avid Bikram yoga practitioners who continue to lock the knee, lock the knee, lock the knee by pushing the knee back again and again can actually stretch out these ligaments over time in a way that is not very helpful. So it's not bad to have flexible, relaxed ligaments. Many of us have those. The problem is that you want to understand your body and be able to work with it really effectively in class. So from a physical standpoint, a yoga asana works on the assumption that your joints are stable so that you can promote freedom and mobility elsewhere in the body. Even when you see people doing crazy backward bends, there are a lot of joints in there that need to be stable to accommodate what the spine is doing. So it's not just about flexibility, it's really about stability of the joints, and so this has everything to do with that. There are a couple of other problems with hyperextension. One of the problems is that the hamstring muscles are entirely relaxed. So if you're talking about trying to balance on one leg, you don't want just the front part of your leg working for you, you need the entire leg working, and that includes the hamstrings along the back. So remember, if the joint is anatomically locked, or if the leg hyperextends, you can't effectively engage the hamstrings in the back, and you want those working for you. The other problem is that I have a teacher, Sarah Joy Marsh, up in Portland, who likes to say, when you hyperextend, this goes for any joint in the body, you stop a conversation between the other joints. So in the case of the knee, when I hyperextend my knee, I stop an essential conversation that needs to happen between my foot and my hip joint, which includes in the hip joint the muscles of the pelvic floor and the lower belly, and for the foot it includes the arches of the feet being lifted. So if you remember that the locking mechanism of the knee joint creates a situation where the femur bone on the top of the thigh here rotates internally on the tibia. Okay, for those who can hyperextend or who create the ability to hyperextend over time through conditioning um, and habits, 
the femur bone begins to rotate even more internally. And this, I'm a really good example of this. Um, I have it more on my left leg than my right leg. This is purely anecdotal, but I also see a lot of Bikram Yoga practitioners who have more of this on the left leg than the right leg, potentially because we always start balancing poses on the left side, and they're often given a little bit more time and energy. But my left leg can hyperextend more than my right leg. And if you look at my left knee right here, and I just kind of stand normally, what you'll notice is that my left knee is actually pointing diagonally as a result of that internal rotation of the left femur. Okay. And if you look down at my foot, you'll see that my foot is pronated and the inner arch is entirely collapsed. It's going to be very difficult to balance like this. So if I started to do standing head to knee and even just contracted the quad from this position with no change in my foot, I would spend an entire 60 seconds rolling from pronation to supination to pronation to supination as my foot and my leg try to figure out what's going on and try to balance me out. I can't actually correct this problem with my knee locked because with that locked position, the femur is already rotated inwardly and I can't fix it. So to fix this, if you have this going on, you actually need to put a slight bend in your knee so that you have access to rotating the knee joint laterally or outward, which lifts the inner arch of the foot. So again, that goes from here, where it's jammed back, locked, even if I contract the quad, I push it forward a touch and I rotate it out to lift the inner arch of my foot. So your knee should line up with your second and your third toe so that the arches of your feet are active. That essential conversation can happen between the arches of my feet all the way up my leg, into my hip joint, pelvic floor, and the lower abdominals. So this has always been the question for me, why are people still advocating for locked knee? And what I think is happening is that avid long-time Beaker and Vocal practitioners who have really solid balancing poses and a really solid practice are for the most part people who cannot or do not hyperextend. So if you look at Isak Garcia and something like standing head to knee, his leg actually looks great. The alignment is awesome. The arches of his feet are lifted. His hamstrings are actually engaged along the back of his leg. And he has that conversation happening between his foot, pelvic floor, and lower belly. Now, unfortunately, that's not the case for many of us. Um, and it just becomes more complicated for most of us than simply a situation where push the knee back and contract the quads. These problems often result in the feeling of, why can I not do standing head to knee? I've been practicing Bikram Yoga for seven years and I'm still having trouble. We're often met with, well, it's a mental discipline and you need to work a little bit harder and focus more. That's probably part of the story. It, it really is. But part of the story could also be your leg is out of alignment um, and something is not stable enough to actually support you in this posture. All right, so in order to start developing a strong, stable, standing leg in a balancing posture and to not hyperextend, you introduce a microbend. Um, and that's a concept that for many of us who were trained in Bikram Yoga, um, we thought was not accurate um, and not true. We also didn't really understand it, I think, in most cases. So what is a microbend? It goes from the leg jammed all the way back like this, even with quads contracted, to a slight bend in the knee. So technically what we're looking to do over time is bring the leg into alignment where the femur bone is stacked right on top of the tibia so the leg is in extension but not hyperextension. But for many students, they have to rebuild this hamstring strength and the, this, the hamstrings are going to protest at first. It is okay to have a micro bend that looks something like this in a standing leg as opposed to this as they work from here to here to correct the alignment get the arches lifted, have this conversation happening, and have a stable foundation. Um, in Bikram Yoga, they often teach us that if there's even a slight bend in the knee, that this is a problem for the knee joint. It becomes unstable, and we really worry then about the health of the knee joint. That is anatomically unsubstantiated. So this is not a problem for the knee joint to balance like this. Yes, if you bend the knee significantly and try to balance on one leg like this, now I've got a whole bunch of other things going on. This is too much pressure on the knee joint. But a microbend is absolutely fine as students, again, work to find the hamstrings and work to a position of having the leg extended, but not jammed back. Just a couple last words here. I've been practicing yoga for 10 years. I still practice Bikram Yoga. I've practiced Bikram Yoga that entire time. And for nine of those years, I practiced Lakhmani. So it's just in the last year or so, year and a half perhaps, um, that I've stopped Lakhmani and introduced that microbend which has helped me lift the arches of the foot, have this conversation, have a stable standing leg, and be able to balance better. Balance will get worse with time. That was the case for me, and I see it happen with many of my students. Your leg has to reassess what's going on. New muscles need to develop, 
and the arches of the foot going from collapsed to lifted is a process that just takes some time to absorb for the body. It does get better and I feel much more stable in my balancing postures and actually throughout my entire practice than I ever have. I am still working in some cases on going from a slight micro bend to having the legs straight without jamming it back because this is a much easier position to have. So just give yourself some time if you are working with this and know that it is okay to have a little bit more of a bend than is ideal as you are working toward it. The last thing that I have found helpful in terms of cueing students with some of this um, is to tell them instead of pressing the knee back, to think about pressing down through the foot and lifting up out of the hip joint. So again, that reinforces that conversation happening between the entire lower body. Um, and rather than pushing it back, we're looking for a contraction and a lift as well as a grounding sensation in the foot to keep you super stable. So stay tuned. The next video that we'll do, I'm going to bring in some of my teachers who can and cannot hyperextend to varying degrees. Um, and we'll go through proper alignment for balancing poses, as well as just other standing poses and a way to work best with the type of body that you have. Hold on this up. Hurt more than anything.